muddy water. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد عباده الذاكرين الشاكرين ونصلي ونسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين بسنة الله سبحانه وتعالى Thank you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for giving us the ability to witness one more Jum'ah, a day of a week in a beautiful month of Zul-Hijjah. And while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his blessing is showered upon those who are in Mecca and Medina and Mina, and his forgiveness is dished away to everybody who is there, we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us also wisdom and to give us health and wealth and give us the ability to stay fast upon this deen until the day we meet him inshallah. Today we talk about the hearts. Hearts, they come in three types, three kinds. Three categories. Hearts come in three categories. A well and healthy heart. That's one heart. And there is a sick heart. And there is a dead heart. So these are the three types that we can get in human being. Somebody might have heart which is healthy, or have a heart which is sick. And the, some people have heart which is absolutely dead. The heart that is healthy, is that a heart of a mu'min. A mu'min who is dealing with the Qur'an as guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him the guidance in the Qur'an, and he followed the Qur'an, and the more he follows it, the more he picks up guidance that light up his days until he meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Baqarah, in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people who are mu'min and who got the hearts a healthy one, describing in four ayahs, in the beginning of Surah Baqarah. Four ayahs to describe a healthy heart. The dead heart is described in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah also, in two ayahs. But as for the a, a, a sick heart, is described in the Quran in Surah Baqarah in 13 ayahs. The reason for that is the dead heart or the heart <coughs> which is dead is simple. He's dead. You say, where is such and such? You say, he's dead. So you don't ask more questions. You say, oh, may Allah forgive him or may Allah look after him or whatever. You say, he's dead. Finished. But when you say where is this person? You say, this person is sick. And immediately you ask, what's wrong with him? Why is he sick? Because so many things, so many diseases, so many diseases that can affect our hearts. So you might say, oh, he's got a heart attack. You might say he's got high blood pressure. You might say he's got high or low you know, uh, sugar level. Or you might say he's got cancer. Or you might say he's got this. Or you might say he's got that. You know? So sickness is, is so many. It's plenty. So because sickness is plenty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the sick hearts which people possess 
also in so many ayahs in the Quran. 13 ayahs is reserved for the sick hearts, which is munafiqoon and, and those who are in this caliber. But as for dead person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this, it's very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about these, these people with dead heart, they are kafir. And when they are kafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed their hearts. And when they sealed their hearts, that's it. They, they spent the time that they're supposed to spend in this life, and they die. His heart is dead. He's not hoping for anything from this life. He is dead. So he is just spending a bit of time until he dies. If you try to tell them, if we try to explain to them, if you try to guide them, if you try to say, why don't you think? Why don't you do this? Why don't you? They, they are uninterested, not interested. They said it's this life, and once we die, it's finished. End the story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't spend the time to explain how many deaths can there be. It's only one death. You know, his heart is dead. So this is a dead heart. As for the, the mu'min's heart, which is a, is a perfectly healthy heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to say that. When, when we give them guidance, they follow this guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the Quran, give them his ayat, give him his signs, give him his, his reasoning, and they follow these reasoning, and they follow this ayat, and they follow the Quran, and they gain more and more iman and light in their heart. And also he described them that these are the يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون those who establish prayer, those who believe in the hereafter. You know, there's so many things in this life you cannot see, and you have to believe in it as it is. You don't have to question a lot of things, but you know it exists. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said it exists, so you believe in it. As for the sick heart, <coughs> sick heart is usually follows about something like three different reasons for, for, for heart to be sick. You know, you're happy, you get very, very happy with what you've got. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you children, and you're very happy with your children. You know, oh, I've got loads, of, I've got three sons and two daughters and whatever. You're very happy with that. Allah gave you money. You've got a million pounds in, in, in your bank account, and you're excited about that, very happy. But while you're happy with the ni'mah, which is kids, or money, or this, or a good wife, or whatever, you are, you're forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're forgetting the one who gave you this ni'mah. So, when you have the ni'mah of anything, if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have done what you're supposed to do. If you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you... Give thanks, if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more. And he give you more and he bless these, this lot that he had given you. But of course, a lot of people you give them money, like say, let's say, Karun. Karun, he had so much money, they say, loads and loads of good, strong soldiers, good, strong men, they couldn't carry the keys for his safes. The safe where he put the money, where he put the gold, where he put all these things. Loads of people can't carry it. Carry, can't carry the keys, never mind his wealth. So he was so rich. And when they asked him, you know, you are so rich, why, what, you know, why don't you give thanks to Allah? Or what, what are you so happy? That? He said, no, it's, it's nothing to do with Allah. It's my effort. It's my... You know, I'm a, I'm a clever man. I'm very educated. I'm very this and that. 
And they said to him, do not, do not be so happy. Give thanks to Allah who give you that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away from him. Also Sayyidina Sulaiman, alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salatu wa salam, he also was a king and a prophet in the same time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave them loads of, of, of wealth and loads of power. So he had power and he had wealth. And when they asked him, you know, you, mashaAllah, you are very rich, you are, you know, plenty of wealth, plenty of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with loads of things. He said, he gave me all these things to test me. Am I going to be thankful or am I going to be careful? You know, am I going to be a thankful uh, 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 thankful uh, servant or a kafir. <coughs> so when Sulaiman give blessing to Allah and thanks to Allah for what he had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Sulaiman. Praise Sulaiman in the Quran and praise, praise Ali Dahud, all of them. You know, his father and the whole, the whole family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the whole family because he said they are giving thanks. And, and Sulaiman gave us the test. He said, if you, if Allah give you something, give, give thanks to that. So you have to remember who give you these things. You have to remember who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide you with all these wealth and all these health. And you have to give thanks to him. But if you think that you are so clever or because you are educated, you are so wealthy or because you are educated, you've got loads of, uh, children or beautiful mansion or this or that, you have forgotten who had given you this, who provided you with this ni'mah. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. The other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is make, make our heart hard and solid and diseased is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away something from you, you go berserk. You know, why me? Why Allah did that to me? You know, like, for, for instance, if you, if you had few children and one of them died, you, and you go berserk, you say, my child, what, why, why did, what did I do wrong? And you keep on going on and on about it, that you have, how, how come this happened to me? I'm a good person, I do my prayers, and I give my sadaqahs, and I do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you forget also, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the first instant, He is the one who gives you these things. And you have to be thankful. There is a man called Urwa. He had, he, he had some kind of a problem with his leg and they had to cut it off. So they said to him, we have to cut your leg off. So we have to give you something to put you to sleep. He said, Don't, do not put me to sleep. Because I always want to, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to lose my mind for even for a second, if I can help it. So he said, well, well how are we going to cut your leg? We need to cut the, his leg. So how are we going to cut your leg? He said, well, when I go into Salah, then cut my leg. Because when I go into Salah, I get involved with the Salah so much, I don't know what's happening. So he said, cut my leg then. And they did that. And they cut his leg in his Salah and... He, he, he was all right. When he finished his salah, one of his sons apparently had fell from the, the roof of the house and died. So he said, shall we tell him or shall we not tell him, you know, and especially we we'll just cut his legs and what is the situation? The man said, tell him, he's, he's alhamdulillah, he's a sabir, he's a mu'min, he's, he's patient. So tell him. So they told him. So he went into prayer again and he said, Allah, Ya Allah, you had provided me with four limbs. You took away one and you left three. So thank you for what you had provided me with and thank you for what you have taken away. Alhamdulillah. And he said, you provided me with so many children. You took away one and you left all the rest. So thank you for what you have given me and thank you for what you have taken away. This is a heart of a mu'min. 
a heart which is perfectly healthy, a heart which is of, of somebody who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's lit with the, with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, of course, there is many people, as soon as something, you know, they get into hardship, if he has a bit of sickness or a bit of illness or he's not very well or his, one of his kids go away or his money goes down a little bit, you know, like he lose something in the, in the stock market or whatever, you know, shares lose the value or whatever. As soon as he started to lose a bit of money, he also loses his face. And that is a shaky face. That is a diseased heart. The last thing is, well, it's not the last thing, but it's one more thing which is very, very uh, uh, a good reason for a heart to be sick is having, li listening to the praise of people. People say, oh, mashallah, look at him. He... You know, he's praying so well. Or mashallah, he's a hafiz. Or mashallah, he's, he's this, that, and the other. And you, your head swells with pride. You say, oh yes, you know, people like me. People praise me. And people are loving me. And so on. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows which heart is good which heart isn't, who fears him and who doesn't. Uh, so what people say doesn't matter because people do not know. People, they only see you from outside. People say, MashaAllah, is this, that, and the other, but they don't know your secret. They don't know that maybe you are a sinner. Maybe you are not what you look to be. Inshallah, if, if, a lot of people say that this is a good man, he's always coming to the masjid, he's always, you know, perfecting his... Alhamdulillah, this, but this should not... You are aware of yourself. You're always aware of yourself. You know yourself. You know if you are in jama'ah, you are doing your prayer, and alhamdulillah. And when you go home, do you carry on praying? Or do you leave it? You say, oh, well, it's nobody's watching me. Yeah. So don't be fooled by the, by the praise of people. Don't be fooled by what they say. Ibn Umar, when, on his deathbed, they, he was crying. They say, why are you crying, Ibn Umar? You know, you're a biased man, you're a very good man, you did this, that, and the other. You always carried the a hadith of Rasulullah. You always brought it here to us. You always fought in the way of Allah, you did this, you did that. He said, so why are you crying? Why are you upset? He said, all that doesn't matter. All of what I have done is not important. It does not matter. He said, I am crying because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah accept from those who fear Him. If you got taqwa, if you're watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do something with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it from you. And that's why a lot of Sahaba or a lot of you know, very good people, Salihin, they always said, if we just know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have accepted one rak'ah from us, one single rak'ah from us in all of our life, say you've lived 60 years, 70, 80, 90, if you know, if you are confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have accepted one rak'ah from you, because you have done it with sincerity, and you've done it with khushu'ah, you've done it with, you know, all loving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all you, 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 you would like to, to have what's in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he have kept for you in the hereafter. If you do this with khushu' and with, with sincerity, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted one single rak'ah from you, you are saved. You are saved. But have, have we done this rak'ah? We don't know. Another, another biased man, he said, I would like a penny. Penny. He said, what do you do with a penny? He said, I will go a halal. Halal penny. Not coming from haram. Halal penny, 100%. He said, I will go and buy a loaf of bread. And I will dry it. And then I will make it into tahin. I will crush it. 
Yeah? And every time I'm sick or one of my family are sick, I take a tiny little bit of that and give it to him as a medicine. But you have to have this from money which is halal. You see? Because most of the time, our money is not very, it's suspect to say the least. Suspect. We don't know if it's halal or haram or, or maybe there is something is mixed with it. Maybe you had a, took a bit of interest and we shouldn't have done. Maybe we should have given it to a, a poor person and we didn't. Maybe we should have paid our zakah but we didn't. Maybe we should have gone for hajj and we, we said, ah, forget it. We'll do it next year and next year and, and so on. So there's a lot of maybes. And that's why this man said, if I know that this penny is halal and I bought a, a loaf of bread and I crushed it and I kept it for every, every time somebody, if my, me or my, my, my family is sick, I just take a tiny little bit and give it to him. This halal bread, inshallah, will make him as a whole. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts of those who are healthy and those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look to them and give them their own light and we own guidance and he accepted us in, in this world and in here after insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.